what about non-food related things that people can use to uh, moderate energy I, w- I was wanting to ask um, if you have any suggestions for that so what I was thinking is things like the non-sleep deep rest or like um, cold showers because I guess if someone just needs a momentary uh, let's say it's the middle of the day and they just need a boost um, I think something like that can it has a good role what um, what suggestions or any comments on that yeah, definitely. And I also want to just say one last comment on the whole point about other, like trust Allah, but tie your camel. Yeah. You got to do your part. Like Prophet Musa Salam had to strike the ground and then Allah split the Red Sea. When you take a step towards Allah, Allah runs towards you. Mm. But if you just don't take action, you just sit on the couch making dua, but you don't do your part, then what are you expecting? Are you going to expect it to rain out of the sky? I mean, yes, Allah in the past has, you know, rained the uh, manna and quails from the sky for the Bani Israel. But at the same time, you know, that hasn't happened to everybody. Most people have had to take some kind of action or to have the Barakah rain from the sky or the Barakah come into their life, inshallah. So, inshallah. you know, uh, sabr, sabr is, uh, means patience, but it also means like perseverance. And that means to keep taking action, even in the face of adversity and even in the face of difficulty or not getting the result. And one thing that happens with that is being process oriented, focusing on the process, which is a perfect transition to answer for your next question, which is what are some processes I can implement in my life that will enhance my quality of life, how I feel, make me feel more motivated, make me feel more driven, more energetic, better overall, in addition to nutrition or in conjunction with nutrition. And cold showers is definitely one of them. Like before this, I took a cold shower. Why? Because if I took a warm shower before this, I'd be all relaxed and be like, hey, welcome to the podcast. You know, <laughs> We're here, we're recovering, we're just chilling. Because I had a cold shower, I was like, all right, bro. Boom, let's go. I did. Let's go. Come on, let's go. Come on. Right? <laughs> because cold showers increase your cold, cold showers increase your dopamine levels, yeah. right? And they also are anti-inflammatory. You know, they help with lowering inflammation, they help with tightening up your pores, so your skin quality is better, right? And they also build discipline psychologically, right? Because you know, it takes, you know, a somewhat crazy person to have the level of discipline and go take a cold shower, but then you learn to love it. Mm. And the strategy I use is I started off with warm because there's a benefit to warm shower, which is it recovers your body, helps with blood flow, all that stuff, helps with reducing soreness. But I finish with cold. So what I do is I, I set it to cold and then I make a whistle during the cold, the entire whistle. So it takes, you know, over a minute. So now you're getting at least 60 to mm. 120 seconds of you know cold water exposure. The other tip with this is you got to control your breathing, which is another strategy as well. But controlling your breathing with the cold shower, if you go and you start hyperventilating, you're going to have a rough time in the cold shower, right? But if you take slow breaths and you breathe as if you're sleeping, like, then it controls your physiological state. And you can even hear that my voice got a little bit deeper and slower just from doing that one, you know, demonstration breath, because what it does is it controls your physiological state. It makes you more grounded, right? And there's also this uh, breath that Andrew Huberman, since you mentioned him before, uh, advocates for. And I used to hear this from uh, my friend Ibrahim, my friend and client Ibrahim. Um, he's the guy in the testimonies who also has a big full beard, mashallah. And so Ibrahim, he would always, he would always do this, man. Ibrahim, like I, I always associate this with Ibrahim. he go... <laughs> <laughs> yeah double inhale double inhale double inhale slow exhale and what i actually heard on one of the huberman podcasts is uh if you have a side stitch that actually helps you with the side stitch because it's like a nervous response and it helps shift your uh the state of your central nervous system to help with that so even just doing some breathing like observe how you're breathing are you stressed out you're breathing like mm. or are you breathing like yeah Right. And I think the reminder helps, like, so even just sat here, I can see, like, if I actually, like, sit back a bit and, like, you start doing deeper breath, it kind of helps with everything, doesn't it? It's just a habit. But, yeah, sorry for cutting you off. That's okay. Yeah, yeah, it helps you stay calm. It helps you stay grounded. It helps you stay in a good state. And it helps you stay humble, too, you know? Like, as a believer, you know, we can't we can't let ourselves get in our arrogance. We're in this power-hungry mode where it's like... <sighs> like like a like a dog chomping at the bit mm. right it's just it, it's it's not really the state of like the best believer that we can be versus we're in the state of you know taqwa relaxation you know being focused on our deen being in control of ourselves as opposed to letting our desires control us like you can either let your nafs make you its be or you can make your nafs your be you know what i mean and you, so who's in control is your day running you or you're running your day is shaitan you know influencing you is your nafs controlling you or are you in charge of yourself right and so like that's kind of a very important point because a lot of people they don't they, they allow themselves to be a slave to their desires. And I really believe that learning control through Islam, self-control first through Islam, learning it through fitness as well, learning it through business, learning it through just every area of our life, even with our relations with people, it helps us to be better. Um, and then the third strategy, just to go back to the last point on like how to optimize your energy during the fast would be to go for a walk, right? 
going for a walk is a good chance to shift your physiology. One thing you could do too is you can listen to Quran while you're going on a walk or do dhikr. You know, it's beautiful to listen to a nice, beautiful recitation of Quran while you go for a walk in nature. It's just such a great way to relax. You can listen to Surah Taha, a very relaxing surah to listen to. You know, a lot of beautiful things you can do. So those are some of the strategies, inshallah. Mm, jazakallah khairan for that. Yeah, I think the walking combination yeah. with zikr um, is definitely a good one. Uh, sometimes you just want to walk and let your mind run, I guess, like wherever your mind kind of goes, because um, that kind of helps you relax as well. But um, I remember sometimes when we're walking, especially if people are doing cardio at the gym, unless you're watching something or like you're kind of learning something, I do think that's a good suggestion as well. Like whilst you're on the treadmill, um, you might as well just do some at the car, um, especially if you've already got your consumption done. Meaning like if you're in the gym for like one and a half hours, you can't focus intently on like a podcast or something for perhaps the full 90 minutes. So I think towards the end, um, once you've kind of learned what I used to do is like, say if I'm listening to a podcast as I'm going through, make notes and stuff. And then towards the end with the cardio, I used to just go through my zikr because from one perspective, it saves time. But the other, the other thing is um, you kind of feel present because you're doing just one motion. It's not really taking much of your motor skills, I guess. So then it's easy to focus on it. And alhamdulillah, it, it gives you not only do you have the kind of endorphins from the workout, as in especially towards the end, but then it's like taking care of your soul set as well. Um, so I think that's, that's a really good one, especially the walk, uh, midday walk as well.